So, using Prisma as your ORM for any of your next projects might not be the best choice actually, especially with the whole move towards the edge and just how easy Vercel has made that in Next.js specifically, Prisma is becoming less and less of a viable alternative because due to how it's architected, it doesn't even work on the edge. So what's wrong with Prisma? Good question. And to understand what's quote unquote wrong with Prisma, let's quickly understand how it works. When we're connecting, we are making a connection to something called a query engine, a binary, which is written in Rust for Prisma, then creating a connection to the database in step two, and then sending that back to the query engine. That means essentially we are ready to use our Prisma client. Okay, great. We can use it in our app now. What happens when we make a Prisma request? First off, when we trigger a find many, any query, for example, first it's gonna go to the query engine, what's written in Rust and not straight away the database. Here, this is being transformed into an actual SQL query that the database can understand and then sent to the database, retrieved from the database and then sent back to the Prisma client from the binary as kind of the middleman again. And then we can work with it in the Prisma client after step seven, is complete. The problem lies right here. This query engine binary is written in Rust and it's about 15 megabytes in size. It's pretty huge. And this also brings one central drawback with it. Let's understand the pros first in Prisma. What's the benefit? First off, it's intuitive. You declare a Prisma schema, you can push it into the database. As a developer, Prisma is a breeze to work with. But there are also downsides. For example, it's pretty inefficient. I recently saw a video by CodeDam that I found really interesting in which he explained why this is the case. And the way Prisma works under the hood with its Rust binary is that it fetches both tables if you want to create something like an SQL join. In SQL itself, that is optimized. In Prisma, Prisma just goes ahead and fetches from the one table, fetches from the other, merges them together, resulting in a pretty inefficient data querying. And that becomes especially painful when you're paying your database provider, whatever that might be, based on how many rows are read, like for example, planet scale. That inefficiency can become pretty expensive for you. Yep, and then besides the inefficiency, there's no edge compatibility. And that's also because of the Rust binary that we're using right here, the query engine. That's kind of the problem why we can't use Prisma on the edge. So if those are trade-offs you cannot take in your app because you depend on the edge for efficiency reasons, it doesn't matter. The question becomes, what's the alternatives? Are there alternatives? There are. And one I've been playing around with recently is called Drizzle ORM. It's been gaining a lot of traction recently. It has upsides, it has downsides. Let's talk about it. First off, it's edge compatible. Big one. In the past, I've used Upstash for anything that needs edge compatibility in case of databases. There's an alternative to that now. That is Drizzle ORM. And secondly, very important point, you've got more control. What do I mean by that? If we quickly take a look at the code, you can see it's more quote unquote raw. So let's take a look at the drizzle folder right here under source database and we can see three files first off is the index.tsx this is where we configure our database let me move that over we've got the host username password and then exporting our database this is nothing else than what we also do with prisma then we have our schema in Prisma, that is called the schema.prisma. And in Drizzle, it's just a regular TypeScript file that you can get your tables from. In my case, only one table, that is the users table. And you create those by importing them from Drizzle ORM. Then you've got your migrations. This was a pain to set up. I'm gonna be real with you. It's definitely not as intuitive as just running yarn Prisma DB push and then yarn Prisma generate. The migration is harder and it's not perfect with TypeScript. The database will throw an error even though we're working with a planet scale database. Okay, but one thing that I want to show you is right here. We've got raw SQL files. These are our migrations. If we run the migration command running this function right here and the file with it, then we are gonna get our migrations in actual SQL format that are being then put into the database. That's pretty cool. And it's less abstract than Prisma is. How do we use this? 
how do we, what's the syntax to retrieve data? For example, this right here, we can just say db.select.from users. And you'll notice this is super similar to how you write SQL queries. Select star from users, you know, it's super simple. Their slogan is, if you know SQL, you know Drizzle. And that's very true. For example, how we create a user with a Next.js 13.4 server action is right here, db.insert into the users table. And we want to insert the following values. This is like SQL, man. Is it perfect? No, it has downsides. First off, it's not intuitive for everyone. If you don't know SQL, you're going to have a hard time writing Drizzle. If you don't know SQL, you're going to have a pretty easy time writing Prisma. It doesn't really affect you negatively. Secondly, the setup is more complicated, especially the migrations and running the migration file right here. Not super straightforward. So if the trade-offs for Prisma are some you don't want to take and Drizzle sounds cool, give it a shot. Just try it out. That's how I did it. I liked it. I don't think the developer experience is better than it is in Prisma, but it has its very own benefits that Prisma doesn't have. Let me know your opinion below. That's all for me for today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.